You're watching The Isaiah Factor, uncensored. And we all know the streets can be rough for anyone, but for police officers, they're proving to be downright deadly. The FBI says 2021 was an all-time high for intentional law enforcement deaths since the September 11th attacks. 73 killed last year. It's a nationwide problem. That one pastor in Atlanta says he has a solution to. Take a look. There's a direct tie between the number of officers that we've seen die in the line of duty over the last several years and the tensions that exist between a lot of communities and law enforcement. While we continue to have to address the tragic deaths of unarmed African Americans, most especially like George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and so many others, we also have to focus on the fact that most law enforcement professionals go to work and do a good job every day and do not deserve the kind of attacks and assaults that they've seen. We all have a moral obligation and really a civic responsibility to see to it that our officers are honored and protected. When they do things that are wrong and violate the law, they must be held accountable and responsible. But this overwhelming attack and visceral anger that we've seen directed at law enforcement professionals is doing harm to the whole of our community. So it is incumbent upon all of us to reach out and make sure we're building bridges with our law enforcement professionals to stop what we're seeing happening to our law enforcement professionals. And Reverend Hutchins, how do you keep the public from painting all law enforcement officers with a broad brush? We have to do a better job of connecting the humanity of law enforcement professionals with the humanity and the people, uh, with the people in the communities that they protect and serve. We have in this country a real problem with folks that are focused not on the things that unite us, but the things that divide us. We certainly have to continue to deal with injustices that we see happening, but there is more that unites us together than there is that divides us. We've allowed a what Martin Luther King Jr. called the vocal minority to silence the, the silent majority. The majority of African Americans, Hispanic Americans, and white Americans want the same or more law enforcement in our communities because we see that the biggest challenge that we have in this environment is crime and violence. So the officers are being attacked. We're seeing escalating crime and violence in major cities, including Houston. So we have to find a way, Brother Kerry, to figure out how we can address the continuing need to improve law enforcement, to reduce bias in all directions, but also honoring the vast majority of our law enforcement professionals. That can only happen through human engagement, getting law enforcement officers and people in communities to see each other as humans and beyond uh, the particularities of their individuality. In the past, we have seen a significant olive branch extended between law enforcement and the community when we saw, like in the 1980s, community policing. Any other innovative programs out there that could bring both together, bridging the gap? Well, we have created in our organization the largest and most collaborative police community outreach project in American history, National Faith and Blue Weekend. And really, Brother Kerry, I started that in 2020 to deal with this very issue. As long as we have some Americans in one corner yelling, our lives matter, and a different group of Americans in a different corner yelling, our lives matter, there's very little progress that will come from us yelling and screaming at each other. We have to sit at tables of brotherhood and sisterhood and figure out a way forward, a way forward to help law enforcement professionals get to know the people that they're policing and cause the people to get to know their law enforcement professionals. What we need in this environment is not just policy reform. We need relational and cultural reformation. So in all of my discussions with the national law enforcement organizations, with police departments and sheriff's offices across this country and with communities, is we need not just focus on policy and procedure. We need to focus on the culture, the the. Uh, the, the, the reform of behavior and attitudes that will lead to a decline in officer fatalities, 
both with officers dying and with officers killing unarmed people. It's community policing that we have to get back to. And I really believe that it is incumbent upon the Justice Department and the Biden administration to focus more of its resources in the area of police community engagement, because that and only that, in my estimation, will cause the decline in crime and violence, as well as the decline in officer assaults. For those who may want to emulate the program that you put in place in 2022 years ago, where can they get more information about that and get the details uh, and the nuts and bolts of that program? Essentially, they, the National Faith in Blue Weekend is an effort to leverage the assets of the faith community. There are more houses of worship, faith-based organizations, than any other kind of civic groups in the United States of America. There are 350,000 faith-based organizations. So we leverage those faith-based organizations to be goodwill ambassadors, to build bridges between law enforcement and communities. It's going to happen uh, for the third year in October. I'm very proud that the Houston Police Department, the Sheriff's Office, and most of the agencies in the surrounding area have been involved in National Faith and Blue Weekend. But folks can visit us at faithandblue.org, faithandblue.org. And really, Brother Kerry, it's not just about our program. It's about the concept that we have to reach deeper than our anger and our animosity. I, like so many other Americans, were very angry at what happened to George Floyd. But at some point, we have to turn our pain into power. It's not just the marching and the protesting that led to the Voting Rights Act and the Civil Rights Act and all the other things that gave us the kind of civil rights and civil liberties as Black Americans that we now enjoy. We had to find ways of improving America not destroying it. Our aspiration in this moment has got to be to perfect law enforcement, not to demonize it. All right, Reverend Hutchinson, CEO of Movement Forward. Glad to have you here on the Factor Uncensored, and we appreciate your time this evening, sir. It's good to be with you.